Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed your break and are ready for the second half of the NC Tech 2021 Outlook for Tech. I'm Fatma Mili, Dean of the College of Computing and Informatics at UNC Charlotte and member of the NC Tech Board of Directors. We are pleased to be this year's sponsor of the North Carolina State of the Technology Industry Briefing. Seven years ago, NC Tech's leadership decided to explore the possibility of producing a scan of the state's tech sector with the goal of identifying strengths and opportunities. The audiences would be for policymakers, economic developers, the media, and of course, our own membership. We have released these annual reports each year at this event and shared the key findings with various audiences throughout the year. Today, you are the first to receive a briefing of the 2021 State of the Technology Industry Report, or NCSTERF. You can see on the screen the great mix of supporters that stepped up to underwrite this year's effort. And the report has gone live on a dedicated website while we've been speaking. You can view it at ncster.com. The College of Computing and Informatics at UNC Charlotte is driven by a mission of education and innovation in computing and informatics for the betterment of society. We enroll more than 2,000 undergraduate students and close to 1,000 master and PhD students. Last year, we graduated more than 1,000 IT professionals. Our graduates and alumni are sought after for their technical proficiencies and for their passion to use their technical skills to accomplish great things. Nationally, the College of Computing and Informatics is renowned for the outstanding research produced by its faculty and PhD students in signature areas of cybersecurity, artificial intelligence and data analytics, data visualization, and computational biology and genomics. COVID-19 has accelerated many of the innovations we are undertaking in our offering at the undergraduate and graduate level. We are committed to our role in the community as the Computing College of the Charlotte Urban Research University. Playing this role is a team endeavor. We treasure our partnership with the city, its businesses, and our partnership with NC Tech and all of its members and support their work. It is my privilege to introduce the research consultant for this year's report, Ted Abernathy. Ted is a nationally known economic development leader contracted by states, regions, and others to examine economic strengths and weaknesses and to develop economic development strategies. Please join me in welcoming Ted to the Outlook for Tech. It's a pleasure to be with you again. Uh, this is the seventh time that we've done a state of technology report for NC Tech. And uh, as always, I'm happy to be with you. I wish it was in person, as I'm sure all of you do. Um, it's been a tumultuous year, as we all know. This is a chart showing uh, job gains for the U.S. over the last decade. And you can see that we were at the end of a very long expansion, uh, one that I've talked about a couple times in the past, almost 10 years of expansion. And then in March and April, uh, we lost 22 million jobs nationwide. We've been working our way back from May to November. Uh, we've been adding jobs back nationally. And December took a little bit of a step back. So we're really only about 55% back from the jobs that we've lost uh, and we're not fully open yet so everybody's wondering how many of the jobs will be permanent how many of the job losses were temporary uh, North Carolina continued to do well through the last year coming into the pandemic uh, we're the the teal color there and as you can see uh, actually did better in 19 than the nation uh, pretty significantly uh, but over the last 12 months uh, everything has changed this is our North Carolina charts compared to the national charts. North Carolina's job losses are a little less than the nation's, but our manufacturing sector has been hit a little harder. And then down at the bottom, the leisure and hospitality section nationwide has still about 20% of the jobs down. Now that leisure and hospitality is your travel, but it's also your uh, local leisure and hospitality. So restaurants, theaters, movies, those kind of things. Uh, and until we get the vaccine fully implemented around the country, those numbers are going to continue to lag. 
as we look at the state of technology, the, the STIR report that we do every year, uh, it's always a pleasure for our firm at Economic Leadership to work with NC Tech on these numbers. And uh, when we bring them all together every year, it's usually good news for North Carolina. Um, the methodology is the same. We've tried to stay consistent over the period of time. We look at 87 different uh, national codes, known as NAICS codes, to try to figure out what the technology sector is. Uh, we try to mirror the work that's done nationally so it stays consistent. And we look at every state within those 87. Uh, inside that, we break it down into energy technology, uh, environmental tech, life sciences, and uh, what is known as IT, core IT, which is hardware, software, and communication equipment. Uh, and then we also look separately at occupations. And uh, I won't give you the long version of that, but uh, occupations and in industry are tracked differently. And so we look at occupations around standard uh, occupational code, 65 of those, add them all together. And again, we try to stay consistent from year to year so that we can see the trend lines. Uh, the difference between occupations and in industries is if I, if you work for IBM, you're working in uh, the technology industry, but you might be a cook for IBM or a groundskeeper for IBM. Uh, and so your job is not a technology job. Uh, at the same time, if you're in an occupation for Belk's department store and you're on the floor of Belk's, your, your industry is retail trade, but your job might be in the back office and it might be computer programming. And so we look at both things. To, we do a little bit of a walkover, but that's difficult. But that's the reason that we have difference uh, between occupations and industries, and we report them both. So bottom line, through the end of 2019, and the reason there's a lag is because final numbers for a year don't come out until about 10 months after the end of that year. So we're looking at final numbers. Uh, last year, uh, 269,920 jobs uh, in North Carolina in the tech industry, over 21,000 businesses, and uh, wages over 30 billion. And those numbers, the percent, the they represent within the state continue to rise. Uh, we look at a five-year rolling trend, and North Carolina has consistently outperformed the nation. This last year, our five-year rolling trend came down just a little, and uh, 2019 ended up being the first year in a while where North Carolina did not perform better than the tech sector nationally. We had a little bit of a retrenching last year, still growth, but growth a little bit slower than the national average, and part of that depend was dependent on the types of jobs that we're looking at. We'll look a little bit more at that in a minute. Uh, long term, we think that was a one-year glitch. The projections we have are that uh, North Carolina will continue to outform uh, perform the United States and also all its neighboring southern states as we go forward for the next decade. Uh, our tech establishments continue to grow. Uh, we actually are for over 4,600 more firms in North Carolina than there were seven years ago when we started this, over 21,000 now. And the firm growth each year, last year actually was 4.8% in firm growth, and that's the highest year in five years. So we added more companies, uh, but the total number of jobs only went up at about half the national rate. Uh, the makeup of our tech industry continues to be pretty consistent, about 5% of it is in the energy technology area, 9% uh, in environmental tech, about a third of all the jobs are in life sciences, and we're one of the highest concentrations in the country of that. And then over half the jobs are in that core IT sector, the hardware, software, and communication sector. Uh, for the last year, both energy tech and core IT contracted just a little. Energy tech, 2.7%. IT, first time since we've been doing this, went down uh, a little less than half a percent. Both life sciences and environmental tech went up. And over the five last five years, because consistency, you try to look at multiple years, because there are anomalies that happen within years, you can see steady growth in all the sectors except energy tech. We're not a big energy tech uh, state, and energy technology uh, went down some. One of the reasons for that is, is 
a real anomaly of the way that some of our uh, headquarters energy companies were reclassified in the last couple of years. So those numbers also impact this. So I would uh, take a guess and say that if all the numbers were classified the same way by the federal government, that our number would have been higher this year. It was that reclassification that brought the total numbers down. Uh, we also divide every year between technology services and manufacturing, and you can see that uh, both of those numbers continue to go up. Uh, manufacturing up over the last uh, year by 1.2% and over the last five years by 2.9%. This is exciting because manufacturing has been pretty stable nationally, and having those manufacturing jobs are important to the state. And as you'll see in a few minutes, the, the high wage of those jobs are really important in the state. Uh, tech industry jobs are still concentrated uh, in the Charlotte area, very specifically in the Triangle and down in Wilmington and in the mountains. As we look a little bit later, you'll see that the, uh, the types of jobs, the occupations, are spread out a little farther across the state. Uh, Salaries continue to be high in the technology sector. Uh, when you look at cost of living, so uh, price parity is what it's known, we have the 12th highest wages in the tech sector in the country. Uh, and as you can see here in, in some categories like environmental tech, we're higher than the national average significantly. And the others were pretty close to the national average. Uh, those uh, Salaries continue to go up in North Carolina. Uh, tech services average salary 126,000, the earnings, and in manufacturing, almost 150. That's why those manufacturing jobs are so important to the state. Uh, we also then look at the impact of the tech sector uh, in North Carolina. So as you might imagine, there are direct impacts if you work for someone, uh, but there's also indirect impacts. If your salaries are that high, you spend those salaries and that creates other jobs within the state. And so when you look at the total impact of the tech sector, you're looking at almost 900,000 jobs, over 60 billion in earnings uh, and almost 200 billion in sales. Uh, when you look at that uh, overall, uh, it's growing. And so the first time we looked at the tech impact on earnings in North Carolina, uh, you know, it, it, it was a lot less. It's grown by 38% over the seven years we've been doing this. So huge impacts of the earnings as they ripple through our, our state economy. Uh, we're now at 20% of the jobs in the whole state can be attributed to the tech sector, almost a quarter of the wages. And that's up from about 17% uh, when we started doing these reports. So the depth and concentration of technology within the state continues to rise at a, at a really good clip. Um, we started way back when looking at a set of states that we wanted to compare ourselves to. Uh, you can see those states here. And over the last five years, only Washington state uh, had tech sector growth that was higher than uh, North Carolina's growth of these states. We're ranked seventh overall. But as you can see, places that you might expect a lot more growth, the net in the last five years for Texas, 2.7%. Uh, for Virginia, 8%. North Carolina's is 18 So very strong over the period of time. Uh, when we look forward over the next five years, North Carolina is projected to continue to have real strong tech uh, employment growth. You can see the uh, the states in green up here, and they're scattered. Some of them are in uh, energy tech, like in North and South Dakota, uh, others uh, in different types of technology. North Carolina has a real mix, and as you can see, the Southeast has become an area with uh, real strength in this. When you look at occupations, the total tech occupations are 332,000 in North Carolina. Uh, that's a change of almost a quarter gain over the last five years. Uh, only 37% of the tech occupational jobs are in tech industries. So the overlap is, is not real strong there. And as I said at the beginning, you can be in the tech industry and not doing technology work, or you can be in any industry and doing something technical. Uh, you can see the difference here, the tech occupations uh, with that 332,000. 
This shows you that technology jobs are permeating every industry. So more tech jobs in finance, more tech jobs in professional services, more tech jobs in retail, uh, in government. We see the permeation of tech everywhere. And uh, so it's important that we measure both things. Over the past seven years, the employment in the tech industry has grown by 22%, but in tech occupations by 31%. We almost have a third more people working in technical jobs than we did just seven years ago in the state. And that lends itself to the way we teach, the way our education systems and training systems are. In order to continue to fund and uh, those things, it's important that they teach the type of jobs that uh, our companies are needing. Uh, the big four occupations within tech occupations are software developer applications, uh, business operations specialists, computer systems analysts, and computer user support. The growth rate, for instance, in software over the last five years is 55%. So uh, that's huge, and systems analysts also huge. Uh, those are all high-wage jobs. Those are the hourly earnings beside each one. And so uh, getting more of our young people uh, trained in these fields is important, and getting more mid-career people that might be uh, displaced by automation or something else into these fields uh, is something that can really strengthen our state's competitiveness. When you look at occupations, uh, 11th uh, growth in the last uh, five years, and that strong. And going forward, we're also projected to be the 11th fastest growing state. See a lot of Western states in those occupational growth. And some of that is lifestyle and quality of life, and uh, others are uh, state uh, companies that are fleeing California or other high price places. Uh, it's a real mix is what's driving the uh, growth. Uh, this is the chart of tech occupations by county in North Carolina. Everything uh, that has a color on here is more than 3% of the occupations in the county are technology jobs. You can see that that's much broader than it was for just the tech industry. So technology training and the availability of tech workers is important for um, almost half the counties in the state. Finally, uh, about every other year, we do a survey going into the uh, state of technology. This year, we talked to just under 100 technology companies uh, in December uh, about their year. We, uh, we found to ask them how they thought the industry did in 2020. Uh, I'm sure that we all think 2020 was a, a very uh, unusual year with the pandemic and the global recession. Uh, but a lot of uh, technology companies thought that the tech sector in North Carolina had a good year. A few, just a few, a great year, but a lot, a good year, almost all either good or okay. Uh, we asked them about their specific business even more. I mean, 20% had a great year last year, and that was a very uh, challenging year. Uh, but overall, a, a lot more had a good year. Uh, we asked uh, how the pandemic had impacted their individual business. Uh, and some uh, a great deal, but a lot, just a little or a moderate amount. And how much will it impact you going forward? So uh, only 38% uh, said it really had a huge impact last year. Only 17% think that it will have a huge impact in 2021. Uh, so people adjusting to this and technology has played a major role as we go forward, uh, adapting to, to life at home and remote learning and all of that. Uh, we then asked what they thought this coming year would be like. So in 2021, I expect our business will, and about three quarters said grow. So we're expecting a big year uh, from tech companies in North Carolina. Only 2% thought that uh, their business would decline in the coming years. And uh, so I think that is a huge upside for all of us. And then we finally, we asked uh, the factors that impact their ability to be competitive in North Carolina. This is a question we've been talking about since the beginning, because this report helps the staff at NC Tech uh, talk to legislators and, uh, and encourage things that will make it better for the tech industry. Uh, the factors that uh, were the most important were the quality of life and higher education assets in the area. The, the quality of life is uh, both everybody's ability to enjoy their quality of life, but also your ability to attract people to move to North Carolina to take the jobs that you have. Uh, the higher education assets, which we're all very proud of, allow us to grow some of our own. 
This has been a year where North Carolina has been named one of the best places to do business, the best business climate, uh, and just a re just recently, Comptiva, who is the group we use to establish the different uh, national codes for technology, they named their top 20 tech towns, and uh, both Durham, uh, Charlotte, and Raleigh turned out to be a place where uh, three of those tech towns out of the top 20 are. Only Colorado uh, has three in their state, and Raleigh and Charlotte uh, in the top five. So really strong uh, recognition this year, and that recognition helps with recruitment. We also look, and I encourage you to look on the web and look at the uh, information that's there. We also measure the state's competitiveness on a lot of factors. So there's dozens of these types of charts. Uh, once again, North Carolina is one of the leaders in women working in technology. We're number two this year among states. District of Columbia always scores number one because of the just the way that uh, uh, more women are involved in government and government technology is a big part of the District of Columbia. This year we got edged out just slightly by Maine, uh, who I don't think we compete with very often, but uh, North Carolina finishes the sec second best uh, state for women in uh, technology. Uh, we, uh, we again broke the top 10, number 10 in venture capital per uh, GDP. Uh, and uh, that's a good thing for our uh, state. Uh, California and Massachusetts continued to dominate venture capital, but North Carolina had a strong showing. Uh, Final question we ask on the survey is, as we emerge from COVID-19, what do you expect? And overwhelmingly, and this is backed up by lots of surveys I've been looking at nationally, uh, a lot more remote work is here to say. 97% of the respondents thought that remote work was going to expand. Uh, the World Economic Forum just recently suggested that uh, when all this is said and done, that uh, 20 to 25 percent of people will work predominantly from home, another 10 to 15 percent uh, at least part time. When all this started, we were under 10 percent working from home. So that's a big change we're going to face. Uh, and then the other thing, 82 percent thought there'd be more demand for technology, and that supports that remote work at home, but it also supports our lifestyle. We're now remote banking, remote exercising, remote learning, we're, you know, everything has uh, has gone that way. And if there's any trend we'll remember that uh, was accelerated during COVID, it's going to be remote everything. And so more demand for tech as we go forward. Just a final thought. So when we do this study every year, what we're trying to do is understand the strengths and weaknesses in North Carolina. And uh, competitiveness for both attracting companies to the state, your expansion of your companies, and also uh, having people move here. It's always a mix of do you have the right business climate, tax climate, legal climate, regulatory climate? Uh, do you have the right workforce? Can you get uh, people, grow people, train people here, whether the physical infrastructure supports that, and whether you have the innovation assets, both with your R&D, uh, your higher education, and your entrepreneurial ecosystem. So we try to look at all those, measure them. I encourage you to look at the report and see how we stack up. And in the end, it's a matter of having the uh, the idea going forward that we're going to continue to improve all those because competitiveness uh, is increasing. And uh, as our firm says to everyone, serendipity is a bad strategy. We have to be intentional in the things that we do. Again, happy to be with you. Always great to do this uh, for NC Tech and on behalf of our team at Economic Leadership. Uh, I'm, we're looking forward to a, a wonderful 2021. Thank you. Well, hello, Ted. <laughs> Morning, Brooks. How are you? I'm great. Thank you for the presentation. As always, uh, it's always uh, with great anticipation that we await the release of this annual report. You mentioned this is the seventh one. It gets a lot of attention during the course of the year by the media, by public officials. It always warms my heart when I hear the governor or others uh, quote from it without even knowing I'm in the room and uh, hearing that. So it means it's getting some some. Uh, traction across across sectors, which is which is great to see. Um, we have a, several questions that have come in for this live uh, few minutes that we have. We only have a few minutes, but I, I do want to try to get a few in. So I'll do quick questions and quick answers, and we'll get however many in we can. I'll combine sure. two of them. <laughs> I think people understand that you have all sorts of data sources that allow you to, to, to display 
what tech employment growth has looked like in the past, but you also have data in this report about expected job mm -hmm. growth. One of the questions was, how do you how do you determine that? What are you using to come up with that? And the related question is, with COVID's impact, how do you just even at a gut level feel like um, the remote working trend and so on might impact the definition of future job growth in North Carolina when so many people can work remotely and may not live in North Carolina even while working for a North Carolina firm? Yeah, good questions all. So we don't do our own predictions. Uh, we subscribe to a group of uh, organizations that predict uh, growth going forward. Uh, EMSI data is the main source, and that's uh, in the report that you can see. They predict by occupation, by location going forward uh, out to about 10 years. And so uh, I agree with the, the tone of the question that uh, predicting has always been hard. It gets harder as we go forward through COVID. So that's where the projections uh, come from. Uh, I think if people were listening last year on stage, I mentioned that uh, it was going to be harder and harder to do this report because more and more occupations included tech-related work. And eventually, you know, if half the world is classified as a tech occupation, <laughs> then we, uh, we don't get to to be too uh, too discerning in the way we do this. So uh, I think remote work is going to make this even harder. Uh, we already know that we have people that uh, commute uh, to North Carolina from states far away and they, they, they're they listed as working here, but they live other places. Uh, I think that uh, it's gonna be hard for us to try to take into account the person who is living uh, in Bermuda and working as a uh, tech person, but we already know that happens. A lot of software, people that are associated with North Carolina firms are scattered and uh, it's how they report those kind of things. So I agree with the, the questionnaire. It uh, is gonna be more and more challenging to do that, uh, but it also is gonna help companies because it'll give them a broader base uh, for which to, to get employees. We just don't get quite the economic yeah. benefit we would add. Sure, uh, makes sense. So another quick question is, um, this is a natural question when we release this report, it is mainly state level data and is compared to other states. That's the nature of the report. Although, mm -hmm. uh, so first of all, a lot of people have questions about sub, sub uh, regions, of course, um, and we don't report that per se, although it's certainly gettable information. Uh, but a related question is sub sectors. There are four main sectors that make up tech as you described, mm -hmm. as we define it. But then within those, uh, one of the questioners has asked, uh, are there ways to tell how much, uh, what are the data around FinTech or around other types of, of subgroups within IT? Yeah, it's, a, it's another good question and one that uh, in, when we do this in other states, we've been asked a lot. So there is no FinTech sector in the way that uh, we, can, uh, we can create NAICS codes that come together for these kind of sectors, but there are FinTech occupations. And so you can look pretty closely at the types of occupations that are around uh, uh, technology in the financial services industry. Uh, there's supposed to be some new changes that are happening at the national level in the way we collect data over the next couple of years that uh, will allow more fintech. Uh, another one we get asked a lot is uh, is agrotech uh, and the types of things there. Uh, but uh, just so everybody knows, this is self-reporting. One group is reporting by businesses. One group is reported by individuals with uh, surveys. And so there are limitations to it, but uh, we can do a pretty good job on the financial parts of this that are distinct occupations uh, and can do that along the way. But th there are limitations to the way data is collected. And I, I fully recognize that. The individual pieces are listed in the back of the report. So you can see exactly what's included in each number. We're pretty transparent about that. Great. Yes, it's a very, uh, if you ever have trouble sleeping, you can read the appendixes and uh, appendices and the footnotes uh, for, and the uh, source citations, but that, that proves how thorough it is. We got time for one more question I'll throw you away. A lot of questions submitted, but almost all the ones that have been submitted have been along the lines of more granular level detail, and I've sort of addressed, addressed that, so I won't ask every one of them and get the same answer, but I will ask this one. As a follow-up, have you looked at how uh, the tech and occupation growth in North Carolina compares to overall job growth. Uh, yeah. In other words, does tech uh, outdo the general economy about on par or lag or what have you? 
No, well, so one of the pieces that I think I covered into this morning's report was the growth in the overall direct and indirect impact of technology in the state. And that's a combination of the tech sector growing faster than the rest of the economy. It's also a factor of the tech sector's wages getting higher faster than the rest of the economy. So you have a broader overall impact. But yes, we do look at those uh, numbers. Technology, uh, I think it was about 17% of the overall economy, uh, direct and indirect. Uh, when we started this seven years ago, it's in the 20s now. So it is growing faster. Uh, different parts of the sector are growing faster than others. And uh, certainly the core IT and the bio parts have been growing uh, pretty dramatically and the wages have been going up. So more and more impact. And yes, tech is growing faster than, than the whole of the economy. I, I have not looked at the individual sectors to see which one might be growing a little faster. And I would caution everyone that when 2020 numbers come in, a lot of things have changed. Uh, I'm old enough and you are too to remember when uh, 20 years ago, everybody thought that everybody would be working in retail by this time because that was the, oh God, everybody would be working at a retail store. Well, it didn't turn out. So projections, you know, they're not linear. We'll, uh, we'll have to keep watching them closely. <laughs> well, I think 2020 is going to present a lot of interesting uh, data. One of the things we talked about when we launched this report was that I would not only be interested in offering this annual uh, summary and sort of environmental scan on how we're doing compared to other states, but then over time to see trends. Do we yep. see our relative position move up or down, even if our raw numbers hold steady? A great example of that is the women in tech uh, stat that we have hung our hat on for these first six years of being the number one state in the country for percentage of the tech workforce that's female. Uh, we came in second this year again, to Maine. It was a very close uh, number, uh, yeah. in two decimal places, I think, almost. And actually, our our raw percentage was almost exactly the same, maybe a, a slight dip, but but Maine went up a bit. Have you looked in general uh, at are there are there states that are making a move on that or any other metrics that, can, that that jump out to you? Yeah, I think, Brooks, the overall trend is that technology, while becoming more ubiquitous everywhere, is also concentrating. The industry is picking winner and loser states. I, I don't mean to be blunt about that, but we see a lot of concentrations in states. Uh, I, I did a thing for Washington State yesterday, and in, in our list, you saw that Washington State's the only one of our peers that we identified seven years ago that's growing faster than us. So there, there are trends that are uh, locking in. As far as the trends on individual things are going, uh, over the last 20 years, R&D funding has concentrated more specifically. Uh, and um, I think some diversity is beginning in some states in the in the field so you're seeing some of that uh, you also see how public policy impacts this so uh, under certain administrations uh, more or less investment goes into parks so you'll see more energy investment in republican uh, administrations more environmental uh, tech in uh, democratic so we see those trends follow and uh, north carolina's real strength in uh, life sciences i expect to be something that really pushes our numbers over the next couple years so we look at them uh, all together and the strengths and weaknesses of the state have stayed relatively the same, uh, but 2020 will change a lot of things as we go forward. Yeah, I expect, I expect that it will. Um, I know our audience uh, would love to ask a million more questions. I wanna share with our audience a few things about this report. Um, first, uh, today is the release of the report. If we were in person as we normally were, we would have handed you all in your seats in the hotel ballroom a copy of the key findings. Uh, this is sort of where North Carolina stands out in various ways. Uh, we do still have that, it is digital. If you go to ncstir.com, that is a freestanding website where the current report has been uh, posted. It's done in a very nice, uh, easy to view and easy to navigate sort of way. You can move your way through it as you see fit. You also can download the full narrative report, all the details, all the footnotes, all the sourcing. Um, while on that site and also see all the underwriters who stepped up to support our ability to offer this uh, this uh, uh, material to uh, to North Carolina's citizens, our businesses, policymakers, and more. So ncstir.com, you'll find on our website, if you go to nctech.org, that you can go to the resources area and you'll find uh, the NC Stir section. And when you go there, you will also see a link to the key findings 
the key findings is a brochure form, so it's easy to sort of skim over. It's a snapshot of where North Carolina has a particular strength. So Ed, I mean, Ted, I have a friend named Ed too, almost as good looking as you. Um, Ted, thank you very much for taking time to be live with us for a few minutes today and for all the work you and your team do uh, to produce this report. And we'll have some announcements coming soon about a new uh, report, a new offering that NC Tech will be launching in 2021. Uh, with Ted and his team's help. So stay tuned for that. Uh, so with that, I'll, I'll thank you for uh, being with us and I'll pivot over now to introduce uh, Chris Downey with Flex Central, who will introduce our next segment. <laughs> 